What's up everyone, Soldier First Class here, and today's mission, I'm giving you my guide to completing the Legendary Bout, Cloud vs. the Warriors in the Battle Simulator. The first set of Legendary Bouts are solo fights, meaning more than ever you'll need to rely on only one character to fill any holes in your strategy, and some Legendary Bouts are harder than others. That's where this guide comes in. Before we get started, while I can definitely get you through this without it, it's highly recommended that you finish the Brutal Challenge Rulers of the Outer Worlds, as this gives you the God or Damarung accessory. Because that requires such a high difficulty spike to complete, this guide will be on how to complete this challenge without it, which involves the Genji Gloves. These gloves break the damage limit of 9,999 and allow you to do insane damage to every enemy in this challenge. So you'll want to go into this with a lot of lightning materia because most of the enemies you'll face will be either weak to lightning or at least neutral to it. However, you'll also need some self-sustain because hard mode removes all item use and we won't be using healing materia for this one. So here's my setup with Cloud. You'll want the Slipstream Saber for its 6 linked materia slots and good magic attack. You'll want Cetron Bracer for its 8 linked materia slots and you'll either want the Genji Gloves or the Goddard Damarung accessories. Genji Gloves are easier to obtain because you can finish Gilgamesh Island on easy and then get the recipe for Genji Gloves, get the items to craft them, and that's about all you have to do. My fastest time actually came with the Genji Gloves, so yes, this is entirely doable without having beaten Rulers of the Outer Worlds first. Now for the Materia setup, and we'll start with the weapon. You'll want to use Elemental linked with Lightning and Wind, HP Absorption linked to Lightning, Magic Focus linked to Lightning, and Phoenix Summon Materia for the extra Magic Attack stat boost. You'll then want on your armor Elemental linked with Fire and Ice Materia, MP Absorption linked with Lightning, Maxed Out Barrier Materia, ATB Boost Materia, Magic Up, and First Strike. Try to have all of these maxed out, but if you don't, I'll leave a link to my AP grind method that can give you thousands of AP in a short amount of time. I also can't stress enough that for this method, you'll need to shortcut Prime Mode for this challenge if you want to beat it quickly without God or Damarung. Prime Mode's added damage with Genji Gloves breaking the damage limit is the one-two punch you need to make this a much easier time. Now let's talk about the fights themselves. The first fight is a joke, so hold square as the battle starts to charge at the enemy using Cloud's attack that draws them in, and use Thundaga or your limit break. This fight is a joke, but the rest are definitely not. This is the one that probably ended my run the most, and it's White Terror. This fight is really simple from a fundamental level, but it's easy to lose because of the mechanics. He'll have three main attacks and one super attack. White Terror will use a standard claw attack, spin swipe, and throat clamp. When it goes for throat clamp, don't be a hero and try to tank it, just dodge out of the way and regroup. I highly recommend as your opener that you spam ATB boost as the fight begins, use your prime mode shortcut, then open the tactical menu and cast mana wall on yourself. This will not only allow you to tank more hits, you'll be able to boost your damage a lot with this combo. The way prime mode works is that if you hold square it gives you two different effects. One is Berserk and the other is Fury. If you continue holding square for at least three strikes, you receive the Fury bonus which gives you a massive damage boost. It also boosts magic damage and combined with Genji Gloves will make taking down these enemies much faster. The only bad side effects of these two status effects is that you take increased damage, but that's why Mana Wall is there. It also features a really short duration, so you'll want to get it just before unleashing a Thundaga in these scenarios. White Terror's super attack is called Ear Splitting Howl and it does massive damage and will likely one-shot you or at least defeat you regardless of if you block. As the fight goes on, an energy will start to gather around it, so when you start to see him glowing red, use Thundaga and a follow-up attack. This drops its power level back to base and avoids this move altogether. Or if you have the God or Damarung, wait till you see it using Ear Splitting Howl, then immediately launch your Limit Break. Not only will you do major damage, you'll also become immune to incoming damage for the duration of your limit break, effectively eliminating this move. The strategy for this fight is to counter White Terror by blocking in Prime Mode, getting a couple of minor attacks in, then go back to blocking. When you get major openings, feel free to hold square to build that Fury up and get that extra bit of damage. After a few hits, use Thundara when you have an opening to gain back some HP. Once you've staggered White Terror, build up Fury with Prime Mode and then unleash a Thundaga and if that doesn't finish it off and you've built up enough Limit Break, use Cross Slash and end the fight. If it doesn't go down, it should be close enough that continuing to counter it should take it out the rest of the way. Next up is Irasaros, and this fight is super simple, but again can catch you off guard if you're not careful. Dark Souls players, I'm about to give you something you'll recognize. Stay on the booty! It has very large hitboxes, but only from the front and sides. If you remain on its backside, you'll be almost impossible to hit, but it does rotate itself a lot, so think of this enemy kind of like a wild bull. So begin the fight with the same opener as White Terror, which is ATB boost, then enter Prime Mode, but this time you don't really need Mana Wall. You'll want to hit it with basic attacks until it goes into Concentrate Mode, at which point you'll want to hit it with Thundaga or Limit Break. Thundaga will do massive damage with its shields down and knock it out of the Concentration ability. 
Then just keep building that stagger bar until it's fully staggered, enable fury with prime mode, hit it with thundaga and or limit break. I was able to beat it in a single round of concentrate in my most recent attempt, so it should go down fairly easily after the stagger. With the Genji gloves and all my buffs, I was able to do massive damage and take it out with one staggered Thundaga. This next fight is another easy one from a fundamental standpoint, but you'll want to consider a few strategies. Begin by using the opener again, ATB boost, and prime mode. Dodge towards it and initiate aerial combat, and remain in the air, dodging its attacks when necessary. When it unleashes Reign of Ruin, you should have enough ATB to unload a Thundaga spell. This will knock it out of the air, and once Reign of Ruin lowers, you can go in for some free hits. You'll want to keep dodging and weaving its attacks, taking a break every once in a while to hit it with Thundaga when you have an opening. Keep an eye out for Daemonic Slice or Earth Render. When you see them start to load those up, create distance and dodge them. These attacks do massive damage and can be a run-ender if your health isn't topped off. Once it's staggered, build Fury with Prime Mode, unleash your Thundaga spells, and continue to wail on it until it's defeated. Now would also be a good time for your Limit Break if you have one. The final battle is more about survival and is basically a war of attrition. Ironclad is similar to Irasaros, and you'll want to remain close to its right hip, as it has a swinging attack with its left hand that does massive damage. Start off with our opener of ATB boost in Prime Mode. Exit Prime Mode and get in close to his hip and start attacking. All of his attacks tend to have a delayed recovery, so use this time to use Mana Wall to help mitigate some of its heavy damage if you do end up getting hit. Build up ATB and use those delayed recoveries to enter Prime Mode by hitting Triangle and build up Fury. Once you have Fury, wait for an opening and hit Ironclad with Thundaga. Look out for its area of effect sword attacks and remain behind Ironclad as much as possible and this fight won't prove too difficult. Thundaga does massive chunks of damage in this fight, but Ironclad's stagger bar is one of the toughest in the game to fill quickly, so be prepared for a much longer fight than the last four. Ironclad will also help you out a little bit with Fyraga occasionally, so your elemental linked with fire and ice on your armor will definitely come in handy here for some small healing. Overall, this is the easiest method I've found to dominating Legendary Bout, Cloud vs. the Warriors. Hopefully this guide has helped you tackle this challenge and get on to the next one. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to omni slash that like button. Let me know in the comments section below if this guide helped you, or how you were able to complete this challenge. Subscribe to the channel and turn notifications to all if you're excited for more Final Fantasy VII Rebirth guides and content. I'm Soldier First Class, and I'm on to the next mission. Later guys.